This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. It's time for Verbal Diaries, where we share what's been on our mind lately. Most people just write it in their diary. Fruit is so unpredictable. Is this kiwi going to be sweet or is it going to be sour? Why is it so unpredictable? Like, is this orange going to be good? Is it going to be dry inside? What about this apple? Probably not. So I just stopped buying fruit altogether. And in my mind, I'm like, it's probably a good thing because a lot of people say there's too much sugar in them. Okay, so is fruit good for you or not? What's going on? (laughs) Just skip it. It's too expensive. I know. I'm done with it. Especially here. Man, the pineapple that I had in Thailand, it was the best fruit I've ever had in my life. I won't even eat pineapple here. That's what I'm saying. Think of where's the closest someone could grow a pineapple. I don't know. By the time you get it here. Yeah, exactly. Think how tired you are after traveling. (laughs) Uh, My verbal diary today is also about being tired. I'm uh, noticing on social media a lot of people who stayed up to watch the coverage of the election last night. A lot of people had the worst sleep that they've had in four years. And then they're getting up and... And back at it again with this high anxiety, just not resting properly. And that's hard Mm -hmm. on everyone. I can't imagine how hard it is on Biden and Trump, who are both at the age that it would seem more fitting if they were trying to become a resident of a senior home (laughs) than a president (laughs) of a country. It's so true. Like my grandma would be going to bed at eight. It's time for a nap, you two. It's so time for a nap. Like, they were probably chugging coffee at 9 p.m. last night. how tired they are. Oh, yeah. It'll ruin their whole month, too. Like, it'll throw off their schedule. (laughs) Honestly. They're going to be so grumpy today. (laughs) Yes. Anyway, my my thoughts going out to the two senior citizens this morning who... uh, are very tired. The strangest thing you've seen on the road while driving or, I mean, while walking. I'd have to say driving through Lloydminster and a uh, truck that was carrying excess pig parts from a what I assume is a butcher. Uh, so that being like the heads and the feet mainly. Oh, okay. The stuff that makes bologna. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, kidding. I remember hearing that rumor as a kid and I was like, I'm sorry. But the guy driving the truck forgot to close his the back of his truck all the way. Ugh. And so every red light, when he started driving again, the heads would all roll out. <gasps> and I was driving through Lloyd, and it was like a murder scene. I was going to say, it reminds me of like a horror movie where yeah. they're all wearing the pig masks. Yeah, there was just pig heads rolling around getting hit by other vehicles. The smell was terrible. Uh, But that's probably the strangest thing I've seen, which will never get beat, I don't think. No, I'm trying to think of something that I've seen. I mean, I saw an owl once. Cool. The story that (laughs) is going viral out of Wisconsin had a uh, sedan get pulled over because of the skidoo that was strapped sideways on top of it. So the cops tweeted, like, (laughs) please don't do this. And they didn't I mean, have is it the- that bad? Yeah. Why? You, because it's not properly stored oh, on top of a car. They were probably running late. They said, good enough. It's like when I clean my room and I just push all the clothes underneath the bed. <laughs> it's good enough. Okay. Wait until there's snow and then drive the skidoo wherever you have to take it is my suggestion. Okay. Britt just wrote in saying, I saw a lady breastfeeding on the highway while driving. <laughs> no. You can't end it there. <laughs> Did you call the cops? Like, that's highly illegal. Yeah. And uncomfortable for the police officer that pulls it over, I, too. Yeah. Like, hey, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Is that? I shouldn't be looking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed that we haven't talked about the whale tail story. Hey. Uh, what? Quit it. What? You you can see my underwear from there? (laughs) No. Okay, so this story is from the Netherlands, and it went viral the other day. There was a metro train that crashed through the safety barriers just before midnight on Sunday this past weekend. But the driver, it was an empty uh, train, Mm -hmm. but the driver escaped without injuries thanks to a sculpture of a whale's tail at the end, 
like right after those barriers. So there's a huge whale tail sculpture and it stopped the train from falling 30 feet. You'd think that it would break a whale tail. Like it doesn't seem like that thick. It would be a thin sculpture. No, it's a huge sculpt. Oh, you're still talking about thongs. No. Yeah, you are. (laughs) Anyway, the most ironic thing about it is this sculpture is literally named Saved by the Whale's Tail. Incredible. It's such a cool story. Tell me something good. Uh, My story is about a chameleon not seen by scientists for 100 years, a specific breed. Well, if you could see it, it'd be a pretty crappy chameleon. Exactly. Love that joke. Found in a Madagascar hotel garden. Uh, Lost for 106 years, this species. Oh, wow. So scientists are very excited. Meanwhile, all his chameleon buddies were like, good job, Curtis. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me something good. Uh, To respond to the people who are still saying it's just a flu, Dr. Hinshaw had this to say. In the last four influenza seasons, the peak number of deaths we have recorded in a full year is 92. In just eight months, there have been 338 deaths because of COVID-19, despite taking extraordinary measures to can't contain transmissions, Oof. which is legit. Yeah. So if anybody uh, from your high school days is commenting on everything on Facebook with it's just a flu, get over it. Uh, maybe just find that quote from Dr. Hinshaw, which is pretty legit. Or unfriend them. Yeah, that's probably good, too. It's a uh, recall corner. <laughs> we like to inform you about things. For a while, there was onions from California. Yeah. And we let you know. True. And here we uh, are again. This time, something with onion flavoring on it, potentially. As uh, Miss Vicky's chips in Eastern Canada specifically, yep, not have, the West, have been recalled with a chance of shattered glass in them. Now, this isn't affecting us because we just got a text saying, I work for the company. The recall is only in the West, like you said, Ryder. East. And sorry, it's only in the East. And it doesn't affect us because we have our own plant here in Lethbridge. Mm. So that's good to know. But still, I want those recalled chips. I don't care if there's glass in it. What? Send them my way. One quick shake in a pasta strainer. <laughs> What's no. the big deal? What's going to happen in a pasta strainer? The, chips, get, are, the, the glass? chips aren't going to fall through no, it. No, the glass would. No. Yeah. The seasoning would. The glass and the chips would be left. Terrible idea. Dangerous idea. So I tweeted about this recall, and that's how um, whoever it is, if you could sign your name, that'd be great. Um, They saw my tweet. That's why they wrote in, which is a good thing, because we probably would have been warning people to not eat them here either. But I posted this tweet, and the thread underneath it is so funny. There are so many hilarious Edmontonians. I wanted to read some of them to you. So this one from Spruce Grove Corey says, Miss Vicky's are the Captain Crunch of chips. You know the risks, but it's too delicious to care. <laughs> yeah, it's just true. like the perfect analogy. Yeah. Um, TJ says, you know, sometimes I eat so many Miss Vicky salt and vinegar, the roof of my mouth already feels like it was hit in a few shards. So it's not a big deal. Um, Suzanne says, they're so friggin' crunchy, they can break your teeth, but I love it. Tara says, they kind of scratch up the roof of my mouth, and it's what I expect and I pay for. (laughs) (laughs) And Suzanne says, yeah, the triple salt vinegar will then just cleanse the wounds. (laughs) This is the funniest thing I've read in a very long time. And it's something we need to distract us from what's really going on in the world right now. Actually, that's a really good tip if you ever hurt yourself when you're out in the wild and all you have is salt and vinegar chips. Just pat the wound with the salt and vinegar. See, now what my move is, is I get the Miss Vicky salt and vinegar to get a good sweat, and then in my mind, I'm like, I just did a workout. (laughs) Okay. 107. Time for something to think about. We've tracked down some very hot takes on what's going on, (laughs) mainly to the south of us today. Still undecided down there. I read Emo Phillips online They tweeted, this is like viewing your own root canal. (laughs) Jenny Johnson said, y'all, it's not looking good for Kanye. 60,000 votes is still votes. Cody wrote, I'm stress eating pancakes at 5 a.m. in Canada. Yeah, we're stressed too. Yeah. Swisher Girl 24 wrote, I don't really care who wins as long as everyone has fun. (laughs) No. 
Eileen O'Connell writes, Donald Trump also declares himself the winner of Mario Kart after the second lap and before the blue shell hits. Because <laughs> earlier today, he did declare that he won. Yeah. And it's not true yet. Like, we don't know. A uh, girl named Lindsay on Twitter wrote, Can't believe when my mother was my age, she had three kids and a functioning democracy. Oof, that hurts. And Stuart Henderson wrote, The thing about being a Canadian is that you have a lot of feelings about the United States because our country is deeply affected by what goes on down there. But you also have absolutely no control over anything, and that's why we have therapists and legal weed. Okay. <laughs> and Doozer wrote, No matter how this turns out today, at least we can all agree that Carol Baskin killed her husband, whacked him. Mm-hmm. Noticed your uh, Facebook status on Play 107YG about how jacked you are for November. Yeah, I just like the look of a good stash mm-hmm. because it's raising awareness, but it also pairs well with a nice long pea coat, a winter scarf, and a Remembrance Day poppy. There are a lot of ladies that disagree with you, though. Really? Yeah, we got this text yesterday. It said, uh, mustaches are my biggest turnoff. Kissed a guy once who had his smelling like two onions wrestled on it. Ew. So disgusting. If you're growing one, Ryder, please don't post any pics or vids. I'll (gasps) unfollow you. No way. Yeah. And I am growing one, and I promise I won't let onions wrestle on it. That's funny. That's a funny visual. So I just wanted to do a quick poll. Where are we at with the stashes? But ladies, you also have to let me know your age. Because I think like 55-year-old women grew up like fantasizing about like Tom Selleck. Right. Right? Yep. And uh, and some like the sex symbols had stashes back then. Yeah, but Harry Styles had one recently. Sure. So the young, like the 20-year-olds uh-huh. may as well, but. We need to know just for this poll. In between there, where are you at with the mustaches okay. as well? Oh, and an overwhelming response. Where are you at with mustaches on the fellas? I would say, what, 90 to 95% of the text rolling in saying girls are down for the stash. They love it. I bet if we did this poll five years ago, uh-huh. it would have been maybe 15%. The mustache is back, baby. Yeah, it is. So it's like the mullet. There's a lot of things that are coming back. And that's why they say, like, don't throw out your old clothes because they're going to come right back into style. Just a matter of time. So (laughs) thank you for all the texts. Yeah, we only got like, I don't know, three or four that we're against. And we can't even keep up with writing people back. I know. I'm trying trying to ask people what their names are, but then it refreshes. And I ask someone that texts us all the time and they're offended. And I'm like, no, no, I meant to send this to someone else. So, yes, thank you, everyone, for your votes. We are digging the stashes. So keep up the great work and don't forget to donate. Yes, to Movember. I'll set up my page uh, today. Yeah. So check back at Play107YG. We got one text that says, I don't like mustaches, but I'm also a lesbian. So what would I know? I'm just wondering if she's maybe checked out your stash. Okay, it's not that bad. It's blonde. It's really just peach fuzz, but... I look at you for the first eight hours of every day, and I've never noticed it, honestly. But you're going today to get it removed to the laser room? I'm going to the laser room in Sherwood Park because we were talking about my mustache yesterday, Mm -hmm. and Lisa's the owner there, and she wrote in. She's like, come on down. I got you. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a little tone deaf for November. Okay, calm down. It's November. I don't need to participate. I'll still support it. Grow that baby out. No, I will grow my leg hair out, though. (laughs) Every year. (laughs) It is an important couple weeks if you're looking for love because things are heating up on dating apps. Mainly because people want to find someone and be comfortable with them to share the holidays with. This is a huge thing. Yeah. You don't want to, potentially, you don't want to go through the holidays alone. So you try to track down that love. Yeah, so a lot of traffic on dating sites. So what are your tips? What do you want to see? What are you sick of seeing? What makes you automatically go, yes, I'm interested? 780-784-7107. A lot of text rolling in. No one-word messages ever. There's no need for them. That's a great text. Uh, (laughs) Paid apps. Let me know you take it seriously, Amanda said. Oh, really? Yeah, and Britt said, ask a question in your bio. Even if I'm not that interested in you, I'm always interested in answering silly questions. And I can vouch for this one. I had, do you like KFC gravy in my bio? 
probably majority of responses that I got were That's answering that question. Yeah, I, I just it think was it's short question. and sweet. Short and sweet. Because I remember we had a guy text into our station and say, I've been on a dating app for five years. I don't know why I'm not getting any hits. And I was like, send me your bio. And he sent it to me and it was way too long. Mm-hmm. And I said, can I please edit this down for you? And I did. And then a couple weeks later, he wrote me, he's like, I have a girlfriend. Whoa. It's just the short and sweet. <laughs> the short and sweet. Also, can we talk about no more fish? Like, I don't know if it's that intriguing that you go fishing sometimes. It's, oh, I think it's an Alberta thing. I, th- I didn't know you were talking about the pictures. I thought you meant there was like a website, Plenty of Fish, and then there was no, one that like no, doesn't no. work called No More Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Out of fish. I do think something that holds a lot of people back from actually going on dates is having too many filters. Like, just Mm. be real. I think everyone is beautiful in their own way. You don't have to cover that up. Uh, Good luck having someone else stuff your stocking this holiday season. Good luck on those dating apps. Talking about how the next couple weeks are big ones for dating apps, the most popular of the year because people want to lock something down before the holidays. So we were looking just for some dating tips at 780-784-7107. Some awesome ones are rolling in. Yeah, so Carol wrote in saying one of her pictures is her playing pool. And she got a message from a guy saying, hey, did you know I have a pool table in my living room? And that creeped her out. But at the same time, (laughs) you got to expect messages like that because you're showing off a part of your personality that some people can relate with and others aren't interested. Right? Yeah. He just said like, hey, I love pool as well. I actually have a table. Yeah. Rather than just like, where do you play or how often? Here's a picture of my basement. (laughs) And and I can see into your living room (laughs) right now, too. See, in my opinion, if I saw a guy playing pool, I wouldn't swipe because I'm not interested. I think it's boring. So there you go. Rude. Be very honest with what you're into. Jack said a short and sweet bio for sure. I was successful with having nice shoes, knowing how to cook, and having a good relationship with my mother. So many hits back in the day. I love that he's reminisce. We're making Jack reminisce right now yeah. on his drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having a good relationship with your mother makes sense, especially, hey, for dudes. Okay, but not like too close with no. your mom because then it's like, are we competing? And you, you don't end up with a monster in law who like exactly. doesn't want to let go of her son. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gerald, you have a really good tip for us for traveling. I used to do a lot of traveling internationally. You know, we can't do that so much anymore. But when I was going somewhere, especially for an extended period of time, I would change my location in my profile to be that area. And I'd ask if anybody was interested in meeting up to show me some sites, you know, stuff like that. And it's a wonderful way to meet local people and, you know, get a bit of a bit of an international dating experience. Totally. And I actually met my wife in Kenya uh, and uh, sort of in that same way. No wow. way. What? Yeah. Well, it's cool, too, because yeah. you get a free tour guide. <laughs> well, kind of. I mean, depending on, on how the dating rituals are in that particular location. Yeah, you, you, know, you might end up paying for dinner, but still, a uh, pretty cool exactly. idea. I like it. Yeah, so it's, it's a fun way to meet uh, people from other places, too. Play 107. I've never been a card guy no. as far as, like, rewards points go. It just drives me nuts. Yeah. You, you fill your gas tank and you don't swipe an optimum points card? What's wrong with you? Well, I've just never... Been able to like relate with, oh, I got the double the double the points for spending an odd amount of cents <laughs> and the first Tuesday of the month. You're f- offending everyone well, in the world right now. A lot of those cards are like, okay, sorry, I don't keep up with no. what Tuesday of the month it is. And you if are I get failing. And what what am I going to use 4,000 points for? That doesn't make sense to me. It should make sense to you. Every time you spend a dollar, you get 15 points at Chopper's Drug Mart and 10 points at other... Once you get to a certain amount of points, <laughs> it's a certain amount of dollars. And then when no. you swipe your card, they'll say, oh, you have $20. Do you want to redeem that today? I'm like, heck yes. But then there's people that say no, and they save it up till they have like hundreds of dollars to redeem. If they just made it in sense, like... For every no. dollar that you spend, you get four cents. I would be able to justify carrying around a card and having a thick wallet and a crooked hip. They help. It helps to get people in the door when shoppers like places will say, "Hey, if you come down today, it you'll get double. twenty. You'll get double the points or three times the points. It's worth it." Mm. But you actually have discovered kind of a card it's a like a digital card yeah. and did it blow your mind yes yesterday i used <laughs> air, air miles for the first time can you believe this rider 
And You're I've a been 38 year old man, and you just got air miles. I've been grocery shopping the majority of the time for 20 years. Like, yeah, I just got air miles, and I saved $16 on a hundred dollar bill yesterday for some reason. I still don't know why. She's like, do you want to go triple the... What double, is this voice? Do you want to triple the double air miles or do you want $15 off? And I was like, oh, that one. That okay. makes sense. I love these texts rolling in. People are so fired up that you've <laughs> never used a points card before. This one says, don't talk shiz about my points. First and only warning. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Ryder, stop. I'm with Lisa on the point, says John. But then, then, then there's also... People listening that have never understood points cards, so they just don't get them. This this is not a waste of time. This is not a scam. I'll even avoid places that have good, like, membership rewards deals. Because Because you're not in on it? Yeah, because it's like, garbage. I'm going there, I'm looking at the sale price, but I don't get it because I'm not a part of your clan. You do realize that you can now use your Optimum Points card in the liquor store at Superstore, right? Like, you would have so many points. (laughs) Okay, so our question is at 780-784-7107, what rewards program do you belong to that's actually worth it? Hit us up with details, and I don't want to hear about triple the rewards. Ryder, that's going to be the number one answer. On Wednesday afternoons, if you (laughs) buy triple items, you get double points. Rick said, I haven't used a rewards card since the Subway sticker card. And it's true. I think a lot of guys... Uh, guys just, they don't want to be carrying around these extra point cards. You know, a majority of them, you can just give them your phone number, right? Right, I guess. I didn't know that. Um, a lot of people texting in saying they have like $200 worth of groceries that they can get for free with their points card, especially when it's like 30 times the optimum points. You want to go shopping those days. You got a wild story for us. Fire away. I went shopping a couple weeks ago for a shawl for my wedding dress because I'm getting married on Saturday. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And the lady behind the counter said to me, she says, do you realize how many points you have? And I said, yeah, like maybe 10 or 20 or whatever. And she goes, no. I said, well, how many do I have? And she says, just by looking at it and estimating, you have about $700 that I could go to spend. And that was uh, for Hudson's Bay. Yeah. See, here's the problem. I had a rewards card for Zellers. Can't use that anymore. No, exactly. Which is why it is risky saving up your points. <laughs> you <laughs> Too never long. know. Yeah, <laughs> you can even top that story. What do you got? Okay, first of all, just wait till you hear this. You need to do points because my husband and I went on our honeymoon in Europe to Italy for three weeks and it paid for all of it. No. What? Yes. RBC Avion. And is that a credit card deal? That one's a credit card, but you get points on every single purchase, and we saved up, and all our flights, hotels, everything covered. Ooh, taking 90s to the next level. Let's go. Rider, rider, rider's recorder. A uh, Rick texted us and said, yo, 90s at 9, uh, can you do a little November rain? He also said, because it's November and it's raining where he is. Very rare. I'm going to do the solo in a second here, which is the toughest part. I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> Let's go. Good. Uh, Rick just wrote in saying he's working out at the gym right now. He has us on in his headphones, so I hope that inspired you to lift heavy. <laughs> uh, this song was requested by Sarah for the 90s at 9. I love this song. Thank you for listening to Play 107. Lighter and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.